بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا تذكر يوما كنت تعانق دمعة الفكر تناجي الله في صبر وترجو رحمة تسري فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير ترى ما زلت تذكرها فجرنا خلالهما نهرا وكان له ثمر فقال لصاحبه وهو يحاوره أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا ودخل جنة وهو ظالم لنفسه قال ما أذن أن تبيد هذه أبدا وما أذن الساعة قائمة ولا إرددت إلى ربي لأجدن خيرا منها منقلبا قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره وكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم سواك رجلا لكنه الله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك كنت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح صعيدا زلقا أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا وأحيط بثمره فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها وهي خاوية وهي خاوية على عروشها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا ولم تكن له فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولاية لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح فأصبح هاشيما تذر الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا ويوم نسير الجبال وترى الأرض بارزة وحشرناهم فلم نغادر منهم أحدا وعرضوا على ربك صفا لقد جئتمونا كما خلقناكم أول مرة بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشركين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب 
ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا ويوم يكون نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواكعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعوهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذون بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما بلغا مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيلا في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غداءنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإني نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان وأن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتد على آثارهما قصصا فوجد عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا 
فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتخرق أهلها لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أكل إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال لا تآخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال قتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أكن لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدا فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهلا فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجلا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر فأردت أن أعيبها وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة خصبا وأما الغلام فكان أبواه مؤمنين فخشينا أن يرهقوا ما تخيانا وكفرا فأردنا أن يبدلوا ما ربوا ما خيرا منه زكاة وأقرب رحما وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فأرادا ربك أن يبلغا شدهما ويستخرجا كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا ويسألونك عن ذي القرنين قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله مولانا العظيم Shukran Jazakallah to Hafiz Wasim Ashtika for that rendition of the glorious Qur'an. May Almighty Allah bless us all through the barakah of the glorious Qur'an. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. My dearly beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, all those who have gathered inside the masjid, mashallah, at 250 for today, may it only get better from here. Ameen. And of course, all my brothers at the on the outside, we have gathered outside, our sisters at the back, and all our viewers on the YouTube and the Facebook app, I greet you with the universal greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, all thanks and glory and praises belong only to Almighty Allah. For Allah alone is the sovereign of the skies and the earth. And we thank Almighty Allah for honoring us to be from the members of the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know and I don't think anyone can deny the fact that Allah created the world very, very beautiful. If you look at the raging oceans, you look at the majestic mountains, 
You look at the various kinds of plants and insects and all kinds of creation, we can only say, Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allah indeed is the greatest. Allah created everything beautiful. But unfortunately, we find the world today on a global level in so much turmoil, in so much pain, wars in different parts of the world, ripping communities and nations apart from one another. And so we find that if we can only pause for a moment and reflect in the time that we are in, we will find that the followers of the three religions, which is normally called the Abrahamic faiths, that is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Jewish community following Judaism, they are now experiencing and going through very holy and sacred days according to their belief system. Celebrating and commemorating the Passover, which means a celebrating to God Almighty for freeing them from the tyrannical clutches of oppression from the accursed Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt at that time of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. The Christian community, our Christian brethren, for them it is also holy days that they are commemorating because of their theology and belief structure when they believe that today is Good Friday in which Jesus died for their sins and that he was raised again the Sunday morning which is supposed to be Easter Sunday morning and so it is a holy day for them and even though we don't agree with many of the belief systems of other religions we need to know that as Muslims, we must respect people of every faith. And therefore, we also, as the followers of Islam, are going through holy days, the last of the days of the holy month of Shawwal. We have just commemorated the night of Ruah, last Sunday night. And we are preparing to go into the holiest month, the month of Ramadan, the month of the glorious Quran. And therefore, this is a time for us to reflect, a time for us to empower ourselves with the education and the understanding of our brethren of other faiths. Because what is needed today throughout the world is tolerance. Tolerance and respect for other people. Even though we have difference of the belief, there's one belief that binds us all, and everyone believes in one God. Everyone believes in one God, irrespective of people's understanding of the nature of the oneness of God Almighty. But fundamentally, our understandings might differ with regard to the nature of God Almighty, but essentially and fundamentally, we all believe in one God. And therefore I can say that a thing, the matter that binds us to the Jewish community is our belief in Nabi Musa alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. We believe in Nabi Musa alayhi salam, we also believe in a person like Nabi Ibrahim as one of the major messengers and prophets of Allah. And that personality, Nabi Ibrahim he unites the Jews, Christians, and the Muslims because he is seen as the father of all prophets. We are connected to the Christian community through our belief in Nabi Isa alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Even though our Christian brethren believe in the so-called concept of the Trinity or the Sonship of Jesus, yet we believe that he was God sent and that is a factor that binds us to them. And it is for that reason all three religions are called the Abrahamic faiths. However, if you look at 
the life of the Holy Prophet Jesus Christ, whom we lovingly and reveredly call Nabi Isa alayhi salam. He was a very, and he is a very misunderstood person. I mean, he came into this world without a father. He was born to a mother, Sayyidina Maryam, who is the Lady Mary, the Virgin Mary, according to the Christian world. And Allah caused her to become pregnant miraculously without the intervention of a father. So Jesus came into this world without a father. And from there onwards, many misunderstood, underst uh, many, many things that are misunderstood with regard to Jesus start from there. Number one, the point that caused a great lot of misunderstanding is the concept of the Trinity. Believing that Jesus is God. Believing that God Almighty is one God, but is actually three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. No one can understand that. Not even the most learned scholar or bishop or pope of Christianity can ever truly explain you the sense of the concept of the Trinity. Because you cannot be God and you your own son and you the Holy Ghost also. So Islam totally denies this concept. But it is not for us to ridicule our Christian brethren. It is not for us to mock against them or to debate with them in ugly ways that will hurt their feelings. We need to sit down and discuss and have dialogue on an intellectual platform, on a reasonable platform. Make them understand why we don't accept the concept of the Trinity. Because the Trinity, the Godship of Jesus, cannot even be truly proved by the Christian Holy Bible itself. If you look into the Gospel of John, for instance, which is part of the New Testament, John is one of the four Gospels of the New Testament of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these four Gospels give you an account or sometimes differing accounts of the life of the Holy Prophet Jesus Christ. And in that Gospel of John, he tells us of the incident which many of us perhaps know. The incident when Jesus was in the desert on the mountain and he fasted for 40 days. Jesus fasted for 40 days. And when he completed his 40 days, the devil came to him, Shaitan came to him. And Shaitan said to him, if you are truly the, the son of God and on the side of God, then look at all these stones, turn it into bread. Then you can have the best bread because you must be hungry after your 40 days of fasting. And Jesus said to him, you Satan, let me tell you, that man does not live by bread alone, but by the power of the word of God Almighty. The second thing, challenge that the devil put to him, the devil said to him, that come let me take you onto the highest point of the temple, on the highest part of the roof of the temple, and then if you are truly a true prophet or a son of God, then jump down, I'm sure God will send his angels to catch you. This is how Shaitan is playing with all of us every day, putting various things in our minds to challenge the power of Allah. And again, Jesus said to him, it is not for us to test God Almighty, but God Almighty is the one who tests us. The third thing, again, Shaitan tried his luck, he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world of, in the universe. He showed him the picture of the kingdoms of the world. And he said to Jesus, if you worship me, I will give all this to you. And Jesus said to him, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Get away from you, Satan. For it is written, 
that you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. I mean from the answers that Jesus gave to the shaitan which is recorded in the Holy Bible, that in itself is proof that Jesus denied the fact that he is God. So how can people understand him to be God when he himself never claimed to be God? In fact, this is what Allah says in the Quran on the mighty day of judgment when the entire creation will stand in the divine supreme court of Almighty God Allah. Allah will ask Jesus, O Isa, did you tell people to worship you and your mother Mary as gods in association with me? And Jesus will say, Subhanak, Glory be to you, Allah. If I had to say such a thing, you would have known about it. I have never, ever claimed to be God. Here the Quran puts down a challenge to the whole world. Bring proof where Jesus say, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. So the Quran is categorical on the fact that Jesus is not God. And this is how we must bring our children up with pure tawheed in the firm oneness and absolute oneness of Allah that if people will, will even think of becoming murtad they will at least know that I can't become murtad because then I deny the absolute oneness of Almighty Allah the second point that brings much misunderstanding about the personality of Jesus is the allegation that he is the son of God or the begotten son of God. Every Christian missionary worth his cloth, he will quote you the Bible verse in John chapter 3 verse 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now this word begotten, is an animal act which belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. And do you know, in all the modern versions of the Bible, they have now thrown out the word begotten. If you look at the King James Version of the Bible, the word begotten is still there. But you look in the New International Version of the Bible, you look into both the Revised Standard Versions of the Bible when it came out and all the new modern versions, the word begotten is thrown out because they realize the misunderstanding that it brings about. People believing that God actually has a son. When a'udhu billah, we ask Allah's protection from such a statement. Because the kuffar, the disbelievers in the time of the Prophet wasallam, many of them also believed in the existence of the angels, of the malaika, but they believe that the angels were females and the angels were the daughters of God. Astaghfirullah. And Allah took strong exception to that. And that's why Allah says in the Quran, there was a, a group of the Jewish people who used to believe in Nabi Uzair, who according to the Bible is Prophet Ezra. They believe that Uzair was the son of Allah. Allah mentioned this in Surah Tawbah. They believe that Uzair is the son of God. And Allah said, and the Christians believe that Jesus is the son of God. Allah say, I take exception to that. They say that the most merciful Allah has begotten a son. How does the ayah continue? Allah say, they have come forward with the most abominable assertion. They are swearing against the majesty of Allah. Because you can only get a son if a male gets sexually intimacy with a female. That is the only way you can get a son. So if you say that God has a begotten son, then you are implying serious allegations of sexuality against the personality, the person, the nature 
of Almighty God, who is the creator of the heavens and earth, and who is indeed above all needs. Every need that you can think of, God Almighty don't have a need. And so this concept of sonship of God comes on many, many years ago, even before Christianity, in the pagan religions. Like, for instance, there was a religion which is called Mithraism. And they believed in a person who was named Mithra, the founder of that religion. And the followers of Mithraism also believed that Mithra was the son of God. So it is a borrowed pagan concept and belief about the sonship of Almighty God, Allah Azza wa Jal. And so the Quran denies that. And then, of course, the other point that brings about much misunderstanding with regard to the Holy Prophet Jesus is the issue of the crucifixion. Yes, if you study the history of humanity, you will find that more than 2,000 years ago, there was a crucifixion taking place in the city of Jerusalem. But there were also many other crucifixions. It was a form of punishment by the Roman government that time who occupied Palestine, who occupied Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the time of Jesus was under the occupation of the Romans. And if they wanted to make examples of people, they used to crucify people. So yes, the crucifixion did take place, but the person that was on the cross was not Jesus. It was not Nabi Isa alayhi salam. He prayed to Allah, and Allah saved him. And many of the scholars say that the person who was put on the cross was Judas Iscariot, Judas the traitor. Because Judas was the one who betrayed Jesus. And how did he betray Jesus? He could have just pointed Jesus out to the Roman soldiers and say, there's he. But no, like many munafics, like true hypocrites, Judas went and he kissed Jesus on his cheek in order to show to the Roman soldiers, this is the one that you must capture and arrest. But look at the hypocrisy. He kissed Jesus. How many people are there who have this trait in them that they show you the most beautiful smile? They are prepared to kiss your hand. They are prepared to bow down basically before you, but then they stab you in the back. Hypocrites will always be there in every generation. It is my and your duty to ensure that we do not have these traits of hypocrisy in our hearts. Don't judge other people. Don't look at other people and accuse other people of being monarchic and hypocrite. No, I must look at myself and analyze myself, take stock of myself and find out whether I have hypocrisy in my heart. And so Allah makes it very clear in the Quran, no Muslim believe that Jesus was on the cross or that he ever died on the cross. Because Allah is very, very emphatic when Allah says, وَقَالُوا And they, the Jews and the Christians say, إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بِنَا مَرْيَمْ That we have killed Jesus, the son of Mary. But Allah gives the reply by saying, وَمَا قَتَلُوا وَمَا صَلَبُوا وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍّ مِّنْ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِّ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا بَرَّفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا No one can be more emphatic than Allah who says For a surety they did not kill him they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it was made apparent to them. It was made to them as if it was Jesus, but it was actually Judas Iscariot or another person who was on the cross. Because even in the present day Bible, it says the person hanging on the cross were crying out to God and say, 
Oh my God, Ella, Ella, Lama Sabachtani. Oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me in the lurch? Do you for one thing that God will leave Jesus or any of his prophets in the lurch? Will any of the prophets of God ever make such a statement that, oh God, you left me in the lurch? That saying in itself is proof that that person on the cross was not Jesus, it was not Nabi Isa. What happened to Jesus? Allah himself gives the answer. بَرَّفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah lifted him up into the heavens. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And verily Allah is the most wise and the most powerful. Why does Allah use the word that he's most wise and he's most powerful? Because it is within his divine wisdom and within his divine power that he lifted Jesus to heaven where Jesus is alive and is coming back before the day of judgment. And he is coming to destroy the Antichrist who is known as the Dajjal. That is another topic on its own. But Dajjal is definitely coming. And the armies of Dajjal who is making this whole world in turmoil, causing whole corruption and make this world Diyamaka. It is the governments and the soldiers who are already paying loyalty to the Dajjal, the one-eyed Antichrist, who will come with many illusions which will look as miracles, but he will mislead the world. And so it's rather important for us, and I'm toning down my message now by saying it's important for us not to go into unnecessary debates after we understand, but let us rather look at the life of Jesus. Because the Prophet وسلم, said in an authentic hadith, the Nabi say, I am the closest to Jesus of all people because there was no prophet between me and him. The Prophet claimed that Jesus and every other prophet from Nabi Adam, السلام, including every prophet that came right up to John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, all the prophets of God Almighty, they were brothers. And the Prophet said, we are all brothers from different mothers, but we are one brotherhood as prophets. And so the Prophet said, Jesus is the closest to me. So if Jesus is so close to my and your beloved Rasul, then we need to know him and all the other prophets and see what lessons we can take from his life. And so I just briefly want to give you some examples of who Jesus was. Jesus was born without a father. He only had a mother. And if you compare him to the Prophet وسلم, both of them never knew a father. Jesus had no father. He was born miraculously. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, before he was even born, his father died. So he also never knew a father. Can you see how close Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was. And Jesus preached to the people who grew up. Allah gave him wisdom. Allah gave him knowledge. Allah gave him atani al-kitab. Allah gave him the knowledge of the, of the Torah and of the gospel. Jesus was indeed an intelligent person. He was 12 years old, about approximately 12 years old. When he was in the temple sitting with the rabbis and the scholars and the ulama of his time, and they were amazed at his knowledge and his wisdom. This is how Allah blessed Jesus. How he grew up, he performed many miracles. One of the miracles that Allah allowed him to perform. Once he was preaching, and there were 5,000 people sitting and listening to him. And after his lecture, after his dars, people were hungry. So his disciples said, the people are hungry now. What are we going to do? And Jesus asked him, do you have anything with you? They said, we've only got five loaves of bread. Now how can five loaves of bread or five rolls or five hot cross buns, how can that satisfy the hunger of 5,000 people? But Allah gave Jesus the power to say, Bismillah. And he started breaking the bread. And every one of that 5,000 people, they ate to their full. Every 
one of that 5,000 people, they ate to the full. This is the barakah that Allah put in there. But this is not just a story to entertain us. From here we can understand that Jesus was concerned with the eradication of poverty. See to the needs of those people who go hungry, who are poor. In these times of COVID, when many people lost their jobs, became unemployed, how many of us really reach out to the poor people? How many people go to sleep at night with an empty stomach, while many of us go to sleep with a full stomach? So one of the lessons from here that we can derive from Jesus, he was involved in poverty eradication, seeing that those who are hungry must be fed. Allah gave Jesus the power to heal people. He touched the eyes of blind people and they could see. He touched the ears of those who were deaf and they could hear. He took lame people who were crippled from birth. They couldn't stand or walk. He said to them, Qum bi'idhnillah. Stand up by the power of Almighty God. And they stood up and they were healed. In the time of Jesus, there was a kind of sickness which is called leprosy. And it was common. Many people had leprosy. They were afflicted with that virus of leprosy. And they became outcasts. People told them, go stay in the mountain or in the bush. You cannot live amongst us. Jesus would go touch those people, the lepers, and they will heal. This was all by the power of Almighty God, Allah. One day Jesus um, healed some of these people and 10 people came to him. They were very sick. They couldn't find a cure at that time. There were doctors and physicians at that time. They couldn't find a cure for leprosy at that time or some other sicknesses. Jesus touched them and they were healed. And out of them, 10 people as they walked away, only one person turned back to say thank you. Out of the 10 people, only one person turned back to say thank you. And this reminds me of our medical professionals and fraternity today who is out there in the forefront leading the fight against COVID-19. How little thanks or ungratefulness they are shown. Doctors and nurses and professionals giving their lives for the benefit of the rest of mankind. How many of us say thank you? So I'm taking the opportunity here in the sacred hour of Juma on behalf of the Board of Trust and the Executive and the Imamat of Masjid Al-Quds and on behalf of our community to say to every doctor, every nurse, every health professional out there who are committed for the welfare of humanity, I say to you, thank you. I say to you, shukran. I say to you, bayat ramakasi. May Almighty God, Allah, bless them and keep them safe. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. And so we can go on and on, but I want to end off now with the last, with the last episode which happened also in the life of Jesus. Many things happen. You know, if I really speak, I will probably finish off by Maghrib time. But I want to use this one for us as a major lesson. Jesus was walking in the street and he suddenly heard noise, people running and screaming. And one lady came and she fell right in front of Jesus, holding his top, holding his robe, his clothes that he had on. And she's saying to him, Rabboni, Rabboni, unsurni, unsurni. Meaning, oh master, oh teacher Jesus, please help me, please help me. Jesus said, what is the problem? And she said, 
this crowd that you see here, they want to stone me to death because they accuse me of adultery. So Jesus turned to the crowd and said, why do you want to stone this woman? They all said, because she deserves to die. She's guilty of adultery. And according to our Torah, anyone who commits adultery must be stoned to death. Listen to Jesus' reply. A lesson for each and every one of us. Jesus said to them, Nabi Isa Islam said to them, okay, if you must stone her, then you must stone her. But let me tell you that only the one amongst you he who is without sin, who don't have any sins, you can throw the first stone. And they all stood looking at him. No one dared to throw the first stone. And slowly they moved away. A lesson that Jesus teaches here, that none of us are sinless. All of us have skeletons in our cupboards. And I'm sure if you open some cupboards, it won't be able to close again because of the, all the skeletons that fell out. Yet how many of us are so ready to judge others? How many of us are so ready to judge others? But then we forget about our own sins, our own faults, our own shortcomings, our human errors. Don't judge, Jesus taught, taught them. Don't judge for if you judge, you will be judged. You judge others. Can you imagine if I keep on judging other people, how will Allah judge me? If Allah must judge me with the same severity and the intensity that I'm judging others, what will happen to me? Where will I end up? So as we so pray and cry and wish for the mercy of Allah, every single day. Simple is, you want Allah's mercy? Then be merciful to others. Be merciful to others. Because what you give is what you will receive. Forgive other people for their faults or what they have done against you. Forgive them. And in return, Allah will forgive you. You will always be the winner. You will always be the winner if you are a positive person and if you remain on the path of righteousness, the path of righteousness which we ask for in every single salah, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. O oh Allah, guide us on the sirat al-mustaqim which is the straight road. And so I want to make a special appeal to each and every one. In my lecture today, I've tried to empower each and every one of you, proving to you from the scriptures that Jesus is not God, Jesus is not the Son of God, and Jesus was not crucified. But this was in no way my intention for people to go about and ridicule other people, or mock at other people, or debate with them in offensive ways, but rather sit down have dialogue, have interaction with people. It is our duty to make tabligh. It is our duty to make da'wah and take the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. But we don't do it. We don't do it. But Islam is still the fastest growing religion in the world. Let us make ourselves part and parcel of this divine plan of Allah that Islam will move on all the time irrespective of the powers that be who try to demonize Islam and demonize the Muslims. They will never ever be able to extinguish the nur of Allah. Islam will march on and it will become more and more successful. It is the ball is in my court and in your court. Do we want to become part of the march of Islam? Or are we just going to sit back, chill, and don't care about the year after, which is certainly coming? May Allah bless us. May Allah guide us. And to all those people who have passed on, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah grant that all of us 
stay on the path of truth, the path of righteousness. Let us live as Muslims. Let us die as Muslims. And let us meet Allah on the day of judgment as true Muslims. I just have three announcements. First and foremost, we have been asked by the families of Muhammad Shafi Adam Aklika, who passed away, and his janazah was on Tuesday. And this Shafi Muhammad Adam Palika Aklika and his family, they were with me on Hajj, and I can testify that they are very good family. That man, Muhammad Shafi Adam Aklika, used to be in this Jumu'ah at Masjid al Quds every single Friday until he couldn't come anymore. May Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus. And his wife, Auntie Zuleikha, is still on the ventilator in hospital, as well as his daughter, Salma, and her husband, Haider Rawut. They are all in hospital recovering inshallah and all our people who are in hospital at home who are recovering or still suffering from COVID-19 or any illness may Allah grant them all shifa and kamila and may Allah grant them afia and to all of us inshallah we have also been asked to make dua for Haji Badr Nisa Jacobs from Beacon Valley Mitchell's Plain it is a hundred days today and for all our deceased wherever they are buried may Allah put nur in their kubors and grant them Jannah to offer those Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and last but not least of course many people are elated and extremely happy that we are once again having our world famous acne available after Juma. And I can guarantee you, and I challenge everyone to prove me wrong, it is the best acne in the country, alhamdulillah. So that acne is available after Juma. Do yourself a favor to get your acne because the proceeds of that acne goes towards the maintenance of our afternoon madrasa. So you will be supporting a very good cause. Enjoyment of the best acne as well as supporting that good cause, inshallah. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Baitra Makassi will have the Adhan now, inshallah, and the Juma Salah will be led by my son, Afis Muhammad Hashim Alexander, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Shed Oh 
Marfa, I just forgot that uh, we have many, many visitors here to Cape Town. We'd just like to say welcome to them. May you have a Mubarak and a safe time here in Cape Town. Also got the mayor of PE, Ajay Solide. Mashallah, welcome. 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الواحد الاحد الذي خلق السماوات بغير عمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يرزق عباده ولم ينس احد اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد المرسلين وامام المتقين وعلى اله واصحابه وامتي الى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فيا امه التوحيد اوصيكم ونفسي اولا بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته في هذه الايام الغفله والفساد تمسكوا بكتاب الله وبسنه حبيبنا المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان واعمال اليهود والنصارى اليهود لا يصدقون بنبوه عيسى ابن مريم ويسبون والنصارى يقولون ان عيسى هو الله وابن الرحمن ونعوذ بالله من ذلك فيا ايها المسلمون نبينا عيسى وما ادراك من عيسى قال تعالى في القران المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا اهل الكتاب لا تغلوا في دينكم ولا تقولوا على الله الا الحق انما المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وكلمته القاها الى مريم وروح من فامنوا بالله ورسله ولا تقولوا ثلاثا انته خيرا لكم انما الله اله واحد سبحانه ان يكون له ولد له ما في السماوات وما في الارض وكفى بالله وكيلا وقال الله تعالى وقولهم انا قتلنا المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وما قتلوا وما صلبوا ولكن شبه لهم وان الذين اختلفوا فيه لفي شك منهم منه ما لهم به من علم الا اتباع الظن وما قتلوه وما قتلوه يقينا بل رفعه الله اليه وكان الله عزيزا حكيما صدق الله مولانا العظيم الحديث عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تتروني كما اترت النصارى ابن مريم فانما انا عبد الله فقولوا عبد الله ورسوله وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام انا اولى الناس بعيسى بن مريم لانه لم يكن بيني وبينه نبي او كما قال صدقت يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات وذكر الحكيم اقول قولي هذا استغفر الله استغفر الله 
أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فتوبوا إلى الله إنه كان غفارا اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوانم ودفد وبارك بجلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل الصحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورد اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وأذاب الآخرة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم عيد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخوي المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة Kindly put your heels on the line Make the soft please and can I also appeal to my dear brothers outside to kindly observe your physical distance, keep your mask on, inshallah. May Allah accept our Juma and may Allah guide us all and protect us all. Amin ya Rabbil Alam. لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله يا رسول الله يا الفلاح قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإن قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم وتواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا والحي القيوم لا توب إليك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو توب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا اللهم أنت السلام منك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم ربنا تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا وجميع أعمالنا اللهم ربنا تقبل منا القليل وسامحنا بالكثير ولا تؤاخذنا بالتقصير ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اهدنا يا الله ووفقنا إلى الحق وإلى طريق مسلم مستقيم ببركة القرآن يا مولانا يا رب العالمين سبحانك ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين